Hey, I'm not making as many videos as I used to make, but it seems like when I cut the grass, I get inspired. So I'm inspired today, and I'm going to use Charles Schultz Peanuts. Noopy says, the world-famous watchdog is ever alert. Woof! That's all right, everything is fine, thank you. Woof! That's okay, everything is all right, you're a good watchdog, go back to sleep. Ah! You try to warn them that the world has gone mad, but they won't listen. <laughs> okay, so that's Charles Schultz. <clears throat> and instead of using the word mad, the world has gone evil. Incidentally, if you take the world mad and reverse the letters, what do you get? <laughs> D-A-M. All right. So where does that lead us? Well, folks, I think it leads us to Holy Scripture. And we're going to look at Genesis chapter 6, starting at verse number one. Genesis 6 verse 1. Now it came to pass which men began to multiply in the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of which they chose. Now this passage is uh, a very key passage, this whole group right here, this whole segment or section or pericope is very important because the sons of God are the fallen angels. Now we know that from the book of Job. Okay, so don't let this term, sons of God, uh, deceive you. So fallen angels looked down on earth and saw women and said, wouldn't it be nice to make a half-breed? They were fair, so they took them as wives of which they chose. Now, that is your conjoining of a human being with a powerful demonic entity. Now, the best example I can give of this would be what we call the mythology of ancient Rome and ancient Greece. But it's really not mythology, okay? It's most likely that what we saw there were the uh, naming of or the uh, getting hold of who was ruling the earth? So those so-called mythological figures probably are very descriptive of the results of this union of the um, demonic beings, the fallen angels, with human beings, with women. So... The Lord said, my spirit, now that should be capital, the King James doesn't put it capital, but it should be capital, meaning the spirit of God, the spirit of holiness, shall not always strive with man. In other words, there is a big problem. These fallen angels have caused an incredible problem. There's evil everywhere, corruption, sin lust, uh, devastation of people's lives, theft, killing, okay, a terrible outbreak of evil in humanity because of these creatures that were produced with the sons of God or the fallen angels with the daughters of men or females on the earth. Now we are told in verse 4 that they were giants in the earth in those days 
when the sons of God came to the daughters of men, and they bare children unto them, and they, the same became mighty men, which were men of old, men of renown. Now, were they literally giants in terms of physical structure? Most likely, because we saw remnants of that with this, the enemy, the Philistine enemy uh, that David fought in Goliath. But they were mighty and they were powerful in terms of their influence over just ordinary human beings. So they would have lots of witchcraft power over humanity. Now that's what we're seeing today. It's almost like a resurgence of this type of thing has taken place in the world today. So when God saw the wickedness of man, in verse number 5, God saw the wickedness of man, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only for evil continually. And it repented of the Lord that he had made man. In other words, uh, God, in a sense, had some regrets that he created human beings. Now, it's a little hard for us to understand that, but the scriptures suggest human thoughts of God in terms of creating us because he saw the great corruption that could occur. So he decided that he would destroy man. The Lord said in verse 7, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, the creeping thing, the fowls of the air, for he repented me that I have made them. And then, of course, verse 8 is Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And that begins us in the whole understanding of a man of faith in verse number 8. But verses 1 through 7 tell us of the plight uh, of God, how God was, was just terrified in his heart of the evils that came on this earth. So where does that leave us now? Back to our cartoon. Well, right to this verse in the Gospel of Matthew. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, the world is getting more evil. And that's the observation that Snoopy made uh, as a watchdog, but instead of the word mad, we're going to substitute the word evil. And even if you take the word mad and reverse it, it's the word damn. Okay? So there's always someone out there trying to warn us that the world around us is getting very, very evil. Now, my friend, that's what you're seeing, okay? A lot of people are struggling right now and trying to figure out what is happening. And if you're caught up in the political system, you'll blame a certain political party or a certain president. But that's all nonsense because all political parties are the same. And all presidents are basically the same. They're all phonies and they're all liars. Now, I can't necessarily go into it and prove that to you in this video. You just have to trust me on that. If you want, you can go to my other channel called Who is Who in Hoaxology? And I'll show you. I will unmask a lot of so-called heroes in history and, and, and presidents and politicians. And, and they're just fakes. They're just actors. And that's all you're seeing now, too, by the way. They're just actors. They've always been just actors. Um, so the devil is in charge of this world. And he wants it more and more corrupt because he knows his time is short. It tells us in the book of Revelation that the devil knows 
His time is short. And that's why he gets angry. And that's why he tries to get as many people as he can to go down in the depths of hell with him. Now I want to tell you the good news of the gospel. And that is that Jesus is coming. But let's go back. Jesus came. He came as Savior. Do you know him as Savior? Do you know him as the one to forgive your sins? But he's now coming as judge. And that's what Matthew is telling us in Matthew 24, 37. And how do we know we're getting close? Well, ask yourself, are these days, our current days, like the days of Noah? What are you seeing? Are you seeing something similar to what Noah saw? So we go back to our little cartoon with peanuts, and we go back to uh, Snoopy trying to warn everybody, <laughs> and what he's frustrated to try to warn them that the world has gone evil. That's my substitution, but they won't listen. I hope you're listening, and I hope you're prepared. And the best thing you can do is stay righteous by being in Jesus Christ. No matter what goes on in this world, you remain righteous in Christ. And it doesn't matter how evil this world will get. Because we know God saved Noah, his three sons, and the sons' wives as well as Noah's wife, making eight, plus he saved some of the animals. Does God have a heart to save people? Absolutely. No matter how wicked it gets around you. Try to hear what it says in verse number eight. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now you can put your name right there. Put your name and then found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hey, I'd like to thank you for watching this. And there I am on top of the doghouse. A watchdog. <laughs> I'm trying to say the world has gone evil. Thank you for watching. End of video.